Microsoft List has just received a huge upgrade. We are now able to create a form directly within Microsoft List to gather specific data columns. You don't need to use any other apps. Hey, my name's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's nerd out. Here we are in Microsoft List and we are tracking issues for Project A and up to this jazzy new button forms. Then we can see that previous form that I've already created there. So let's go ahead and select new form. Yes, we are able to have multiple forms for the same list to collect different information for different audiences, which is such a great feature. Go ahead and give this form a title, a report and issue. And we will also give it a description just to note that this title and description are visible to the person filling out the form. So you just wanna make sure that they are appropriate. In the right hand navigation menu, we're going to see some options here to customize our form. And the first section is to select the fields that we would like to add or include to our form. And you'll notice right away that all of them are selected. So let's go ahead and deselect these. And we're going to see this warning pop up here. And it's just letting us know that one of our fields is required and we are deselecting that. So that's just a really handy little feature there, but we are going to go ahead and click hide. And go ahead and just select the columns in the list that we would like to include in our form. So these forms are a great way for us to isolate and collect data without sharing the entire list. To have our fields in there, we can go ahead and reword any of these titles or descriptions. So this is a great way to tailor these items to the audience that the form is designed for without altering the list itself. Okay, so we have this form coming together to report an issue, but we don't have anywhere that specifically defines the location. So what we can do is head on down to this add new field, and this is going to create a column in the list, which is awesome because we can add it rather than going back into the list and adding it and then coming back to the form. So we're going to see here that these are all of the column types that are supported in the, and you're gonna notice that there are some that are missing, such as an attachment column, and unfortunately not available at this point. Microsoft has said that these are lightweight forms to collect basic information. There has been a ton of feedback on the attachment, so I hope that we are on the right track. Let's go ahead and add a choice column for location. This a name. And we can also define a description, so location of the issue. Below here, we have some quick settings or the ability to even add another choice to our choice column type. Alternatively, we can head on up to the ellipses and select settings. And then here we will see that edit column, which is identical to the edit column structure within the list itself. So we're quite familiar with this. I'm not going to run down, but for example, we could change the color here and then just save our changes. Our form is coming along. So I'm just going to quickly reorder these so we can easily drag and drop them. And now for this reported by, I'm just going to add a description to say your name. I'm going to make this required. And I also just want to quickly edit a setting here to make this a unique value so that we can see that full circle as well. Moving along, we can now define a theme for our form. So if we just expand this, create your own style, then we'll notice here that these are all the different background colors for the form. And then the theme color, I will show you where this goes in just a sec, but let's go with a nice navy blue. Read that there's going to be an ability to add a logo soon, so keep an eye out for that. There are also some settings down here, so if you did want to, for example, pause your form to stop accepting responses, then you can edit a custom message here. So let's just toggle that back on and we can update this confirmation message when that form is complete. To give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying it. It really helps the video get more traction. Now that we have customized our form, we can just quickly preview it here before we send it out just to make sure that everything looks correct. And that little cement button down at the bottom here, we'll notice that that is the navy blue. So that is where that theme color appears. So our form is ready to be shared. So let's click send form and select the link to our form. The link can then be shared however you like. So in an email, in a Teams chat, or even on a SharePoint site. If someone goes to use the link, it's important to note that they need to be logged into their Office 365 account. This is a limitation 
with the list forms compared to, for example, Microsoft forms that can be collected publicly. List forms can only be used within your organization. I to draw your attention to this message here that has been automatically added and indicates that this form submission is not anonymous. So it is going to be attributed back to the person that completed the form. Let's now create a list items that we can see this in action that that required field is working because it's not letting me submit the form without the issue details in there. So why don't you let me know in the comments below the feature that you would like to see in these new forms. And there is our new issue item within our list. And once this has been recorded, then we enjoy all of the benefits of any list item, such as commenting, alerts, and so much more. Other feature that I wanted to demonstrate was the enforcing of the unique values. So we've already created a form submission with myself. And let's go ahead and see if that form is going to submit. And it's not that unique values is working and it's not letting us create duplicate submissions. Right, we are wrapping up here. So let's just quickly head on back up into this forms menu. And from the ellipses here, we have a few more options. So we can edit our form through here or we can turn off responses. So we can stop accepting responses. And then when we turn it back on, just note that that web link is still going to remain the same and it is going to work no matter toggling it on or off. There is also an option to duplicate a form. So if you have a form created, you can easily duplicate it and then edit it. Alternatively, you can delete your form if you are completely done with it. I wanted to take a moment to do a comparison for you. So for the Microsoft list forms, these are lightweight forms for the collection of simple data. So again, it's also that transparent submission where the person that completes the form, we will always be able to identify that person from the form submission. And lastly, it's for internal collection only. We can only collect the information from people within our organization and they need to be signed in to the Microsoft account in order to complete the form. Moving on to Microsoft lists with a combination of forms and Power Automate or Power Apps. This provides more customization and we are also able to add branching and collection of attachments. So we're able to collect much richer data than the lightweight or simple data collection within the list forms. This can also be an anonymous submission and we can also have the ability for it to be internal or external collection. And you don't need to be logged into an Office 365 account. Now, here is a quick side-by-side -side comparison. So if you wanted to take a quick screenshot of that, I also just wanted to provide a quick slide on some features to come in the future. So we have that, of course, the public collection without a login so that we can streamline this data collection process, as well as, a redirect link after the form submission. So right now when you complete the form, it just takes you to that thank you page and there's no option to redirect to another form submission or anywhere else. So a little bit more functionality on that last page there, as well as of course the branching logic like we've seen in Power Apps or Power Automate. This is definitely for more complex data collection types. And then also a signature field. So this one is quite interesting. But um, some people are using forms to collect a signature. So it would be great if we could add this into this new feature as well. And of course, the collection of attachments or images, which is a huge one. I have done another video here on how to use Microsoft Forms and Power Automate to collect attachments if you would like to check it out. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. If you haven't already, then please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to get traction in a saturated algorithm. And also let me know in the comments below what feature you would like to see released in the next update of Microsoft Forms within lists. All right, we will catch you on the next video.